Hey mates, it's me Riz doing reaction on the channel for part 2 of the Cold War by Oversimplified and I enjoyed the last, uh, the part 1 um, I got nothing else to say so let's get to the video You know how I do these videos, I play, I pause, I fast forward, I rewind and I ask questions about something that hopefully you people who are viewing this uh, would put in the comment section on my questions that I ask when I'm not sure of and yeah, let's go. For anyone who thinks recent US history has never been as crazy as it is right now, allow me to present to you the 1960s Extreme Cultural Division. Nope, oh, back up. As crazy as it is right now, allow me to present to you the 1960s Extreme Cultural Division. Let's see what we got. Let's see, the sick civil rights, the hippies, and oh, oh god, the, the peace sign. I'm going nuts. Uh, can't stop staring at it. Division, major political. Okay, Kennedy. Um. Kennedy's brother. Wait, wait. That's still Kennedy. Um. Last name. Uh. Let's see. John F. Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, and um. Martha Luther King Jr. Assassinations and the closest the world has ever come to nuclear apocalypse. Shocked by the CIA's intrusive methods for putting down socialism in Latin America, a certain Fidel Castro met with a certain Che Guevara in a bar in Mexico City, and the two of them decided they should grow some awesome beards and overthrow the Cuban government, which is exactly what they did. Cuba had been America's summer playground, and America didn't like seeing a communist regime being set up in its own backyard. So the US immediately began training up Cuban exiles to invade Cuba and overthrow Castro. Bird. However, as the day of the operation came closer, Kennedy wanted to conceal any U.S. involvement Shut in the plan, up, yeah. so he massively scaled back American air support, and as a result, the Bay of Pigs invasion was a humiliating defeat for America. But Castro felt there was still an impending U.S. threat to his regime. Meanwhile, in the Soviet Union, Khrushchev had a lot of medium-range nuclear missiles that couldn't reach America, but they could if they were positioned, say, on an exotic Caribbean island off the coast of Florida. Hey, I'm a communist who hates America. You're a communist who hates America. You know what that means? We should fall in love. Uh, I was just going to suggest you set your missiles up in Cuba. Oh, no, no, you're right. That's a better idea. Um, from what I'm guessing, I think this is a bit incorrect. I'm guessing that the Russians or some Russian official would have went to Cuba and discussed about on setting up those missiles in Cuba. Uh, from what I was, from, if memory serves me, because I don't think it was Castro that said that they should bring their missiles to Cuba. It kind of puts a big target on them. Anyway. Be still, my beating heart. Oh my on goodness. On October 14th, 1962, a U-2 spy plane over Cuba noticed some... U-2. Something strange. <laughs> Sorry. Sir, you need to look at this photograph. Welcome to... You're right. <gasps> That's the cutest dog I've ever seen. Aww. Sir. I was referring more to the Soviet missiles. America freaked out as they realized what was going on. They were completely vulnerable and they had to act fast. They knew that airstrikes or an invasion of Cuba would likely mean nuclear war with the Soviet Union. So Kennedy came up with another idea, a blockade. The US Navy announced it would stop and search any Soviet ships heading to Cuba and would sink any that did not comply. In response, the Soviet put its military into full combat readiness. The US did the same and began drawing up plans for an... Wrong way, not yet. Yeah, this way, not us. <laughs> Not US. Attack on Cuba. <laughs> Things were escalating fast, and both superpowers were getting ready for <laughs> World War III. Emergency communications between the two sides broke down as Khrushchev rejected Kennedy's demands for the missiles to be removed. No, I don't think... So. I'd be pretty shocked if they actually did something like this. I mean, if you do something like this... You know, they're just asking for just uh, an attack strike. And for the first time in Okay. Alright, the DEFCONs. DEFCON 5, anyone want to go get a burger? DEFCON 4, Russia. Uh, please. DEFCON 3, someone's bound to get liberated. DEFCON 2, America. DEFCON 1, we're all dead. I think... Uh... <laughs> I think there's a better description on the DEFCONs, and if I remember, DEFCON is on America's version of when if there's um, either it's something to do with war or um, nuclear, um, the nuclear go ahead. History, U.S. Strategic Air Command moved to okay. DEFCON 2. Okay, so how 
What's the situation or in danger of America going into? DEFCON 1 means nuclear war. Yeah, the we Soviet go, yeah. shot down a U-2 spy plane over Cuba. A Soviet nuclear submarine in the Caribbean mistakenly believed war had already broken <sighs> out, and two of the senior officers Bunch. gave the go-ahead to fire its nuclear torpedo. Thankfully, the third senior officer, this beautiful man, refused to... Vesely... Vesely... Arkhipov... Arkhipov... Yeah, I tried my best. Authorized the decision. The US finalized name. its preparations, and I kid you not, the day before the US were set to decide the day and time for the Cuban invasion, Khrushchev was like, hey, you know if you just removed your missiles from Turkey, we'd remove ours from Cuba? I think they set up those missiles in Cuba because they had missiles in Turkey. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good to me. It was a bit more complicated than that, but yeah. at the last second, the two sides finally came to an agreement. Soviet missiles were shipped out of Cuba, and the world breathed one gigantic sigh of relief. Except for one guy, who was bloody livid. Phew! <laughs> Let's hope that's the biggest crisis of my presidency. Unfortunately for him, his presidency was to end with one. Having nearly blown up the planet, a few- Oh yeah, Kennedy dies. Yeah. A few changes were made. First, the superpowers agreed to eliminate- Wait, wait. Like- What's weird is that, um, Martha was the King Jr. died, John F. Kennedy died, then Bobby Kennedy died, and... Jeez. Why was there so many... Uh, you know, among many other people who died during the 60s that... Pre yeah, forget it, I'm going. Ban treaty. Secondly, the Soviets ousted Khrushchev and replaced him with Leonid Brezhnev. Whatever happened to the last guy? Or... Or Khrushchev? Khrushchev? Whatever happened to him? Who was a kisser. He liked to kiss. Seriously? Okay. Both sides were deeply concerned at the prospect of nuclear war, but still, the arms race raged on throughout the 60s and 70s. US intelligence worked out that the Soviet's nuclear arsenal was not as powerful as they previously thought, but in fact, it was America that held the advantage. ABMs and MIRVs were developed. Okay, anti-ballistic missiles, multiple independently targeted re-entry vehicles, holy smokes. Ah, so like, shoots up right up in the sky and then and the doctrine of MAD. Oh. If both sides knew they'd be completely destroyed by a nuclear war, neither would risk Ritual starting war. But even without war, the world was already feeling the effects of nuclear weapons. In 1966, above the pleasant town of Palomares in Spain, a US bomber collided with a tanker mid-air, and four hydrogen bombs fell and landed near the town uh... below. It hasn't exploded, so I'm sure everything's fine. Whoa, boy. Uh... Uh, hey, I wouldn't eat that if I were you. Okay. What were you going to do today? Go for a swim? Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, Are you breathing right now? Yeah? Yeah. I wouldn't. It took the Americans two and a half months to find one of the bombs, which had gone missing in the ocean. This was the 14th time America had lost a nuclear bomb since 1950. Nobody knows how many bombs the Soviet Union lost. So sleep well tonight. After... Um... Man, what would... Those bombs were in in the ocean. I really can't think of it. If the bombs went off that were deep below in the ocean, like just went off, would we be able to see it arriving at the top? Like, would something, some sort of splash happen? Okay, actually. The Kennedy's assassination, Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson took over, <laughs> and he inherited a developing crisis in the East, Vietnam. Back in the 50s, the Vietnamese had kicked their French colonizers out once and for all, and the country was divided into two. In the ah, that's where the French colonies were. In the north, a communist regime, and in the south, an anti-communist regime. Both were led by very sweet-looking old men, but don't let that deceive you, they were both ruthless dictators. Seems to be a running theme, doesn't it? And both dreamed of reuniting Vietnam under their own regime. So the North established the National Liberation Front, also known as the Viet Cong, to carry out a campaign of guerrilla warfare in the South with Soviet support. The US sent advisors to help train the South Vietnamese to deal with the threat, but President Diem's brutal policies pushed more and more South Vietnamese to support the Viet Cong. And over the next decade, the situation escalated to a breaking point. America feared the domino effect. That is, if South Vietnam fell to communism, would Cambodia be next, then Laos? Thailand? And then it would just, and then it, uh, during this time, um, 
and the 60s and 70s, and, you know, even the 50s. Actually, ever since uh, co Paul B. Communist thing, there was so much, um, there was always tension with, um, you know, any, com any um, communist um, uh, party propping up in Australia, and they had to, and it was more or less like the US, but a lot less, um, or you could say a lot less like um, all the um, McCarthy trials and such. There was a lot of changes to, like, say, the flag, or, well, technically, there was the flag that we already had a flag, just now we made it, it was made uh, officially into the red inside uh, flag version. And, um, yeah, and when Vietnam was happening, um, this was the start of kind of the relation, kind of the start of what you could describe the relationship between um, the US and America, aside from economics, militarily, uh, we do mil we have um, military support with the US and they give us their military support. And it's worked just fine, really. Though, there's more, de there's more in that, in more detail between that, but, you know, I'm oversimplifying. <laughs> or I could be wrong. And I'm pretty sure anyone in the anyone watching this is just gonna be jamming all down what the actual details is and you know, just wanna enjoy the react. Burma? Oh India? my reaction LBJ to it. had to make a <laughs> choice Christ. between losing South Vietnam <sighs> or sending in the troops. And so in they went. From nineteen sixty five, America found itself in a war unlike anything it had ever fought before. Let's play Spot the Viet Cong Soldier. <gasps> uh hmm. Somewhere here, here. Um, did you see him? Of course not. That's because millions of young American yeah. men were drafted and sent to fight a ruthless enemy who used the thick jungle as its shield. It was also the tunnels on the ground. It was nearly impossible to tell where the enemy. Actually, this thing that I never, this thing that people underestimate is that of um tunnels. You know, we all think about the. Stuff like the Great Escape and the achievement of doing all those tunnel digging, but no one thinks of what happens when a military uh, spending millions of dollars just to make tunnels like this, tunnels down below, and they never think about um about how to deal with uh, stuff going under tunnels, or at least uh, improved versions of it. Now maybe they have over the time, even today, on improving it, but it's. To say that, um, it's like, um, what's it, a dungeon crawler on, on hard mode is putting it lightly. <laughs> actually, that's, actually, that sounds a lot more accurate now I'm thinking about it. Uh, going into a tunnel is some dungeon crawling on hard mode. So, so, Daggerfall Unity on permadeath mode. He was, or worse, who it was. And as a result, the civilian population got caught up in the brutal crossfire. The city of Saigon wait, wait, wait. found Back result, up. the civilian population got. Hello? Hmm. Are we. I could be wrong, but this looks. I think these might be, um, Australians because of the hats. Like here, they got here, and. Is that an L? No, no, that looks like American firearms, but it could be Australians. You never know. Got some of the hats, and this guy, he's got it all sideways, so maybe, but. Tell me, would this be the Australian Army or just the US Army just borrowing some, um. Because, you know, the equipment looks like. Is the American. Looks like um, American weapons, but. I don't know. Someone confirm me on this. Is that a... Got caught up in the brutal this... crossfire. Like to see um. Don't notice the backs, but 
not the, I've noticed the fronts, but not the backs. The city of Saigon found itself under regular attack, and America launched a bombing campaign in the north during Operation Rolling Thunder. The Viet Cong used the Ho Chi Minh Trail running through Laos and Cambodia to supply the campaign. It was a long and brutal war, and I could never do it justice in this video. Coming eventually. But in terms of the Cold War, Vietnam was probably the biggest of many, many global conflicts that signaled a turning point. Under the threat of nuclear war, the two superpowers began working to make their relationship more constructive. And Jumps. as a result, their <laughs> ideological battle... <laughs> oh, oh, come on. They got a katana. They got a buster sword. Seriously, they could have they could have made them... Um, I'm pretty sure both sides had their types of swords. I mean, the... Americans could have used uh, some sort of civil war um, saber sword, and the Russians using their own uh, ceremonial swords before they were communist or Russia. I'm guessing these were easier to draw then. They shifted away from the potential of direct conflict and more towards attempt oh. attempting to influence <laughs> smaller prox. <laughs> okay, um. <laughs> Alright, nev never mind. Actually, still, they should have gave them their own ti their own swords. ...wars around the world. In the Middle East, the Soviet Union provided aid against Israel during the Six-Day War, and then again, when the U.S. backed Israel during the Yom Kippur War. In Africa, the Angolan Civil War saw U.S.-supported South Africans Whoa. fight... Whoa! This ended on 2002, jeez. Soviet supported Cubans. In the conflict between Somalia and Ethiopia, the superpowers interestingly switched sides as re huh? regimes changed, and the US continued fighting the spread of communism in its own backyard, funding the famous Contra groups to fight the socialist <laughs> junta okay. in Nicaragua. These proxy wars were fierce enough to begin with, but superpower intervention amplified okay, the gee. destruction and created alarming levels Whoa, of human suffering. Oh, that is. <laughs> Excuse me. Whoa, that is throughout the what a lot world. of backing and up in Vietnam, was. That human suffering was all being broadcast back home by. Oh God, the wallpaper. I'm. Jeez. Oh, Feels like you can have an epileptic seizure on it. The nice disco ball and lava lamp. Good old television. Going into the late '60s, America was a changing name. Actually, you know what? I think since they that people were able to watch um, what the Americans were watching just the carnage of the Vietnam War the content in the news that they have like it's all the violent stuff and all the shit that would never fly in Australian uh, news TV uh, since they were more exposed to the, Viet the horrors of Vietnam War it seems like um all the stuff that is shown um, on US television. Now, granted, it should be just straight up R, their news source. Uh, take that for what you will, but usually, or well, 90%, we would, Australia TV will never show something like this for all the, um, among, although there are some problems with the, new, uh, the mainstream news, you can. You can draw that to your own conclusion. But Nation. let's continue. This became this. Wait, back up. Television. Going into the late 60s, America was a changing nation. This. 50s. Oh, record players. You know, my dad still has his old um, record players. A uh, record player and... No, no, wait. He still has his old records. His old record player was destroyed. Call it, um, out. Call it that um, it got broken some long time ago, or that it stopped working. And <laughs> but what what is what are these? What are these things? Became this. What the fuck? This. Be okay. L H D O fifty. Came this and oh my goodness <sighs> yeah man I've s you know I've seen these uh vans that but they were not like hippie vans they were like K 
kind of converted into like during the during the seventies and eighties. A lot of these fans were converted into more family uh, fam family cars ish. They were like the cheap version for family cars, or for big families. The, um, actually, um, I think I once um the family had um a convi van. If this is the right word for it, but it wasn't like all this hippie stuff. It was all just a big um, red paint, and it was going through it um uh, through the seventies and eighties because they still had it uh, back in um it was a car that that was used um by uh the, the grandparents. This became segregated drinking fountain. Came this drinking. F the new slogan that was taking root, make make love not. What is wrong? love, not war? The ma <laughs> oh, Forrest Gump spit. <laughs> Little Forrest Gump. Majority of Americans did not approve of Johnson's handling of the Viet. Wait, Johnson? Oh my goodness. LBJ Johnson. Vietnam War, and in 1968, that a silent majority elected law and order candidate Richard Nixon. Uh. As the Vietnam War appeared to be increasingly unwinnable, and public opinion turning increasingly sour, Nixon made the decision to begin bringing the troops home, and ended U.S. involvement in Vietnam by 1973. Two years later, the South fell. The Cold War was now taking its toll on both superpowers. In Russia, a huge percentage of the budget was still going to the military. People were still hungry, and they just didn't have access to the same lifestyle and potatoes and goods as What the? Are you still trying to peel potatoes with a shoe? We have vegetable peelers. The effect to the West now. <laughs> oh, come. Seriously, I think that this is over-exaggerating. I'm thinking... That I'm pretty sure that the that they had some form of way of peeling it, like a knife or something. Unless and jeez, why? This I think this is a joke. Unless I'm wrong. Who peels potatoes with a shoe? As the West. And what did they have to show for it? They weren't even winning the space race anymore. Both. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. Uh, Russia did all the stuff first, but then the U.S. landed a man on the moon and they won. <laughs> I've seen the memes about that. And um, interesting is that how did um, the U.S. Is something that you want to find interesting um, that the the that Australia had the best signal or was got the best signal for when the moon landed because they had to use um. I don't I don't remember which um radio tower it was, but they they had to bounce the signal to Australia and then had to spread it through um through the US and other countries that televised it. So Australia got the best quality and um um I think what was it? I th uh I can't remember if my I can't remember the story if my dad saw it. No, I'm not sure he saw it, but, uh, uh, actually, it, well, it was a, honestly, it was a big deal to, um, a lot of Australians saw the thing televised, or at least, um, heard it through radio, or the thing was televised, but I'm not sure, though, if anyone has, uh, might, some details, like, say, at the pubs, that they, instead of switching to the swords, they switched to the moon landing. I, I'm just really curious about that, if anyone has details on that. Both sides needed to reduce spending in order to rescue their economies, and so both welcomed with open arms an easing of hostilities, otherwise known as detente. <laughs> to improve relations, Nixon became the first U.S. president to visit Moscow in 1972. And Please tell me he didn't ki Please tell me they didn't kiss.
Brezhnev returned the gesture a year later. A number of treaties were signed, including the 1972 SALT agreement that limited nuclear weapons. Relations with China were even improving via ping-pong diplomacy when the U.S. table tennis team went on a tour of the People's Republic. However, internally, China was still pushing anti-capitalist propaganda, which led to some mixed messages. Wait, Nixon even visited China in 1972, and it was a barrel of laughs. Today, the president walks among priceless treasures from China's golden age. Among <laughs> Sorry, the funny thing is, uh, wasn't there like a cultural revolution there where they destroyed a lot of China's culture? No, wait, that actually did happen. So I wonder, for all the recordings that people recorded in China, I think all of them, are, you can't find them. And the stuff they do make is just a tourist trap. Among them, a pair of ear stoppers used by the emperor to keep from hearing criticism. Wait, what? Give me a pair of ears. Gus likes school girls eating cake. <laughs> Wait, what's. Everything was going great for Nixon until it was uncovered that back home he was being a very naughty boy and violating constitutional protocol. I'm not sure what this was all about. I'm announcing today my resignation as president, and I'm passing the office to my vice president, Gerald Ford. Wow, you mean in America the people can actually remove their leader when he breaks the law? Why not just rule by force? Where's the corruption? And my first act as president is to pardon Nixon. Ah, there it is. After the whole fiasco, Americans decided what they really wanted was just a nice, safe guy who wouldn't cheat on them. Jimmy so they Carter? Elected Jimmy Carter. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I was thinking, like, okay, well, was it Jimmy Car And then after him was Ronald Reagan, I'm guess I think. And for some reason, out of all the presidencies, when I look at it, um... Jimmy, um... What was it? President, uh... President Carter just seemed a bit, um... Just, like, didn't seem look like a president. As, I know it sounds a bit strange, but... Like all the famous presidencies, this one, I'm um, unclear of. So, let's get to it. And the two sides met in Vienna, where they signed yet uh, another strategic arms limitation treaty. Too. It's an honor, Premier Brezhnev. Likewise, President Carter. Please don't do that. But that's not to say there was no longer any tension between the two sides, because there was. Heaps of it. Once again, the Soviet Union put down further attempts at reform and rebellion. Prague Spring, Polish Crisis. The Euro okay. missile crisis saw new and improved classes of intermediate range ah. missiles being deployed in Europe. In 1979, the Soviets thought it would be a good idea if they had their own Vietnam and invaded Afghanistan to prevent a US sponsored Islamic insurgency. Oh my goodness. So, <laughs> so the whole thing in the Middle East. Yeah, there's, there's always going to be a war in the Middle East, no matter how you see it. I'm just, I have no idea how this is, all this conflict in the Middle East is going to be, how stopped. Like, even if it's all settled, chances are there's going to be another war just coming next, next to it. Like, I'm not hoping for it, if they can stop fighting each other and just grow stronger together, but... Uh, there's so many problems that this you know what forget it I'm just gonna continue she's 10 years a fucking 10 year war in in Afghanistan <sighs> and in response to these various crises Olympic Games were boycotted what? Conservatives were concerned that Really? The US policy had become too soft. You let and him in 1980, kiss. They decided they wanted a president who would be tough Ronald on Reagan? communism. So they elected Ronald Reagan. There we go. And Reagan came in guns blazing. <laughs> Concerned at the Soviet Union's human rights violations, he made a speech calling them an evil empire. And he also wanted to renew the arms race using technological advances in computing and lasers. He came up with and the Space the Defense Wars. Initiative, also known as Star Wars, Star Wars, which was basically a big defensive anti nuke shield around the country. But Wait, nuke shield? I thought the protection was something to do with, um,. Something to do with lasers that if the missiles launched, they could laser the missiles and just explode before it reaching in American soil. Or am I, or was this the actual plan? 
but a lot of people thought it was a pretty dumb idea. The Soviet Union perceived this shift in rhetoric as the USA getting ready for war, and they were feeling especially threatened as their relationship with their communist ally China had broken down. Relation Ah. Relations took a big hit in 1983 when the Soviets shot down a Korean airliner that had strayed into their airspace, oh. and it looked like the world was going right back to mid 20th century Cold War. Getting real sick but then of this. got really old and died, and was replaced by this guy who was really old and died. What? Okay. Um. What did that guy do? He was replaced by this guy who was really old and died. And okay, what did this guy do? He was replaced by Mikhail Gorbachev. Okay. Coming into office in 1985, he was the real game changer. His philosophy differed a lot from previous Soviet leaders. He felt that the reason the Soviet system and economy was struggling was that it didn't allow the Soviet people to find satisfaction in their work because they weren't allowed to speak freely and lived in fear. Gorbachev wanted the Soviet people to be happy, but unlike previous Soviet leaders, he actually made the change happen. Within the first couple of years, he began the political movement for more openness and transparency and the restructuring of the Soviet political and oh. economic systems okay. and change very quickly took effect people could criticize the government you they suck. could enjoy western pop culture <laughs> the media interviewed Margaret Thatcher wait 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 people could criticize the government they could enjoy I love the west <laughs> don't hassle the whole. western oh my god it's the decade of the mullet <laughs> pop culture the media interviewed Margaret Thatcher but most importantly oh. the Soviet people could now enjoy pizza no. All hail to Gorbachev. He also <laughs> knew that the arms race needed to end in order to rescue the Soviet economy, and a positive relationship with the West must be established. Constructive dialogue reopened and resulted in the INF Treaty, which saw all intermediate range missiles eliminated, which was huge. Reagan's tone towards the Soviet Union began to soften, Maybe evil and is things the right were looking word. up. But what would these reforms mean for the Eastern hmm. Bloc? For decades, the Soviets had been brutally suppressing any attempt at change. Now, would they be allowed? And that was the exact question on Hungary's lips when the Prime Minister visited Moscow. Gorbachev's response, he didn't necessarily agree with the reforms, but he wouldn't stop them either. He was prepared to let oh. the Eastern Bloc choose its own future. This was massive, and the Hungarian leaders began planning free, multi-party elections. Poland followed suit and also held elections in June. The anti-Soviet party Solidarity won 99 out of 100 seats in the Senate. Oh. But not just that. In Hungary, the barbed wire border between East and West was removed. The Iron Curtain what? was unraveling. But not all Eastern Bloc leaders were happy. Notably, East Germany was still ruled by a hardline Stalinist, Erich Honecker, and many East Germans were still eager to get out. They had been trapped by the Berlin Wall, but now they were doing the math. If they could travel to Hungary, and Hungary's border with the West was loosening, could they now make it to the West? That summer, East Germans decided Hungary was the latest top holiday destination. They traveled there in droves, and using various methods, tens of thousands... Okay, there's definitely got to be a movie about a family going to hung do doing the travel between Hungary and to East Germany to West Ger West Germany. <laughs> Don't twist. Seriously, I think someone in the comments put 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 some. There's got to be some kind of movie about that. Since crossed the border into Austria and the West. Austria Honecker was furious and blocked travel to Hungary, but that civil liberties train had started rolling and it wasn't stopping. Thousands more flocked to the West German embassy in Prague, where they stormed the fence around the embassy gardens and a temporary refugee camp was set up. In September, oh. deals were struck to allow the refugees to travel west via train. Back in East Germany, the people were running on a civil liberties high and they wanted their next hit. Dissent was growing. Over time, demonstrations turned to mass protest, with plainclothes secret police officers doing their best to put down the dissent, but it had grown well out of their control. And worse, the biggest demonstration was yet to come. We're gonna put all of this down by force, right guys? Guys? Unfortunately, everyone had realized what he had not. This was bigger than them, and the entire East German Politburo voted him out of power. On November 4th, over half a million East Germans took to the streets of East Berlin. For many, there was still one big target left in their sights that damn wall. The pressure on the East German government was too great, and on November 9th, they made a bit of a chaotic announcement that the travel ban between East and West was being lifted. The change wasn't meant to take effect until the next day, and crossing guards still had orders to shoot on sight any who tried to cross. But that night, huge crowds gathered at the crossing points, and the guards were overwhelmed. In an astronomically historic moment, after decades of family separation and travel restriction, the people were allowed Whoa. to pass through. East and West Berliners couldn't believe it and celebrated together throughout the night. Some even climbed the wall and began to topple it. The Iron Curtain had fallen and a year later, Germany would be reunited.
Elections in Bulgaria, a peaceful revolution in Czechoslovakia, and a violent okay. one in Romania brought to an end Violet communist Romania. authority Jeez. in the Eastern Bloc. America decided it would be best if it just stayed away and let the change happen, as the anti-communist huh. movement continued Bushenia. all the way back to Moscow. Gorbachev had given the people the freedom to demonstrate. Now, they demonstrated for an end to the communist single-party rule, and Gorbachev had to give in. For the first time in history, elections were held in which candidates not officially endorsed by the party were allowed to run. Ambitious rival of Gorbachev, Boris Yeltsin, led a growing democratic movement. Now things here get quite confusing, and the dissolution of the Soviet Union is a complicated topic. So believe me, this is oversimplified, but it went to Okay. A little bit like this. The Soviet Union was made up of a number of smaller Soviet republics, uh -huh. the largest of which was Russia. Yeltsin got himself elected the president of Russia and began a struggle for sovereignty uh -huh. against Gorbachev and the greater Soviet Union. Communist hardliners were horrified at what Gorbachev was allowing, so they briefly kidnapped him and tried to set up their own emergency government. But Yeltsin and his supporters all gathered around the White House in Moscow and were like, no, we have a tank. So the hardliners had to concede and released Gorbachev. Wow. Thanks, Boris. That was a close one. No problem. And thanks to you for all the great freedom you've given us. Any time, pal. And just to inform you, I've used that freedom you've given us to go behind your back and make a deal with Ukraine and Belarus to dissolve the Soviet Union and set up the Russian Federation. In other words, you're no longer in charge. I am. Huh. Dude. So uncool. And so decades of tension. Alright. If anyone wants to put the extended version of this, go for it. Because... Be quite interesting. And the everlasting threat of nuclear war finally came to an end as democratic governments were established in many of the old Soviet republics, and the world got along together forever after. Right, guys? <laughs> Not really. Uh, still tensions. Let's see. You got Donald Trump, Putin, uh, Xi Jinping. Um, let's see. You got France. You got. Macron, the French Prime Minister, um, the German Prime Minister, uh, shoot, uh, North Korea Prime Minister, and then all the other, oh shoot, sorry, something got stuck, anyway, is that it? <laughs> Oversimplified World War Three coming sooner or later. Um... You know, um, is that it? Okay, that's, that's it for the video. Um, you know, I, re I really enjoyed the Cold War one, though how it depends on if anyone uh, asks, uh, answers my uh, questions from reacting to the video. Um, I'm really curious on what these, um, what happened, and... Just if I want to end on this with um, what I think about uh, World War Three, and um, in some cases I think you could say World War Three already happened. I mean, the Cold War might have been, might have been it, but when we think of World War Three, we think of involving nukes and such. But most of the time, um, whenever it's war, it's usually from a proxy war or just um. Like Cold War 2.0, and I think that's sort of similar to what's happening in the Middle East, though I don't know. I have no idea how that's going to be d stopped. And now we've got. It's in fact, I think the next World War is not or It's not going to be like a World War Three or how we imagine it, but a World War of economics. And um, as you could say that. Even now, this whole thing with the coronavirus and all the media stuff with economics, media coverage, and just public perception, and all this stuff that it all just falls down to um, on can and you know can a country can the U.S. sustain itself and not be a part of getting its uh, resource and technology from a very controversial uh, country that. Technically, by all definition, it they're kind of enemies to each other, and also a time where it's everyone's divided, which you know for all governments, I'd say that um all parties need to at the very least uh agree on fundamental stuff to a point where 
people discuss on what percentage or what say the budget of um, let's say military of a let's say a military and other projects to be uh, to be used using on how much percentage of a resource or of, of money or resources or whatever instead of um, just uh, belittling or just doing all this strong straw man tactics but you know I'm not, I'm probably just rambling on on this it's just thinking all this shit that's happening now and politics is complicated but the bullshit is so obvious kind of like the video game bullshit by corporate mouthpieces Anyway, um, that's it for the video, and um, I got nothing else to say, but thanks for watching to the end of the video, please like and subscribe, it brings a smile to my face, and I'll see you guys next time on the Riz Australian History for another React, though if you're here for just a quick update um, on, my on my last update, I'm still doing those videos, I've just, it's been just been busy and it's actually the current one I'm doing John Flynn and the organization that he did um the Royal I feel like it might be the longest video I have to, I'm doing for the main you know for main Riz Australian history videos and not reactions but with that um that's it and have a nice day